Good everyone. Welcome to Grace Kennedy's Investors Briefing. I'm Don Webby, Group Chief Executive Officer. With me is Andrew Masado, our Group Chief Financial Officer. We welcome all participants who have joined us in this webinar. The briefing has been scheduled to run for approximately 60 minutes. We will use 40 minutes of this time for presentations and the remaining time to accommodate your questions. During the question and answer session, you're welcome to share your questions by emailing us at gkinvestor at gkco.com. Let me repeat that. You can email us at gkinvestor at gkco.com or you may call or send a text to our communications team who is here with me in the boardroom at our corporate headquarters at 876-809-1121 or 876-537-1950. Let, let me repeat that. You can call or send a text to our communications team at 876-809-1121 or 876-537-1950. Oh, I will do a, a presentation and then I'm going to hand straight over to Andrew Masado to do his presentation and then we will have questions and answers as I said before. Are we all up and running and ready to go? Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon again everyone and welcome to the Risk Kennedy's Investors Briefing where we'll have a discussion about our audited accounts for 2022 and we'll speak about some initiatives for 2023 and I'll touch on our 2030 vision which is generating a lot of excitement certainly by our team members in the Grace Kennedy group of companies. So for 2023 as an executive team and as a group um, we have developed a 2023 theme on the back of our GK100 celebration and it is Simple, building a bright future together through great people. Building a bright future together through great people. Our story continues. Our story continues. So let's look at 2022 review. We have a lot to celebrate in terms of 2022. It was an extremely difficult year and I'll share later with you on a slide which I refer to as the headwinds but we have a lot to celebrate for 2022. As you know, Grace Kennedy, we pride ourselves with world-class, best-in-class corporate governance, and we were so, so elated to win all the major awards at the JSC Best Practices Governor General Award for Excellence. And this is the second consecutive year that we won the top award. So we won the Grace Kennedy, the Grace Kennedy won the 2021 Governor General's Award for Excellence, we also won the PSOJ, JSC Corporate Governance Award. And very importantly, this is a, uh, 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 a reward that we're trying to win for a little while, but we did it, Perseverance. GK won the Annual Report um, Award. So congratulations to the Board of Directors, Gina Phillips-Black, who is Chairman of our Corporate Governance Committee, Professor the Honorable Gordon Shirley, and all the Board of Grace Kennedy, and to my team for really, really working hard to ensure that we do extremely well and we benchmark ourselves as best in class in the world as it relates to corporate governance. We were also recognized by the RGR Gleaner Honor Award and this was in terms of the business category and it's a recognition of positive and exemplary corporate leadership and expansion during a very difficult time for business and individuals. So, Again, let me thank the RGR group of companies for this award. It's very motivating to us at Grace Kennedy. Thank you very much again to the RGR group of companies. Your other several awards, the JME Award. Thanks to the JME, LACA won the Governor General's Award for the Exporter of the Year. And I can share with you that the best is yet to come in terms of our export targets. The Bureau of Standards, we won three awards. And PNG, as you know, is the largest or one of the most prestigious 
uh, Procter & Gamble uh, marketing companies in the world and we won the distributor of the year. Congrats to Tamara Garrell and, and, and her team, Frank James. Uh, we are extremely proud of all of you for bringing home this award. So let us look at the audited numbers for 2022. Before going into the audited numbers, I would like to give you some amount of context to the numbers that I'm about to present. And we refer to it as the headwinds. But as you know, with headwinds, if you change the sale, there are opportunities. So what you'd have seen for 2022 is rising global inflation. And this is really throughout the, the world. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to touch on, a, on that uh, a bit. So let us look at that chart where you see inflation in Jamaica for 2022 is 9.4%, USA was 6.5%, UK, look at that, moving from 0.6% to 10.5%, and Canada from 0.7% to 6.3%. 6 you have to bear in mind when you look at the Grace Kennedy's results that approximately 45% of our revenue and profits are generated outside of Jamaica. So when you have these inflationary pressures, um, from the USA, UK, and Canada is actually going to impact our margins. But let me tell you, the business that it affected most, in my opinion, is actually our remittance business, where the disposable income of, of our brothers and sisters, the Caribbean diaspora, was actually, um, was actually impacted severely and in terms of the ability to send money back home um, that declined. And I'm going to share a slide with you later in presentation but as you know and has been said by our central bank inflation is a monster and if you don't get a hold of it it will cripple your economy um, so you know I, I really want to recognize the BOJ some of the actions taken may not be popular in the short term however I can assure you it is necessary in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of the inconsistent supply chain uh, this also impacted our, our numbers um, significantly. Where, you know, if we look at our business in the LLC, <laughs> to give you a very practical example, um, on an average on a monthly basis, we now receive, I would say, probably 70 to 80 containers a month through our New York port. And in February of last year, we received 130. So, can you imagine the impact that had in terms of the backlog at the New York? Um, ports and that really cost us a lot in terms of the margin storage cost. The good news is that that has now, um, I would say, normalized. Not exactly to pre-COVID levels, but it's a manageable situation for the management team in the U.S. market. And this is true of Canada and, and the U.K. Good news is that it has now normalized, not to pre-COVID level, but we are almost there. Increasing interest rates, you'd have seen that interest rates have increased um, interest rates have increased uh, throughout, the, throughout the world um, the Jamaica policy rate 2.5% in 2021 to 7% and this is a, a, a strategic move by our central bank um, to tame inflation as I said to you that should that has to be the number one priority of not only the central bank in, in Jamaica but you have heard our our colleagues in the, the USA um, speaking out their own inflationary pressures, Canada and the UK. Then we have the geopolitical conflicts, um, the Ukraine-Russia war, which also impacted our supply chain. And then the FX movement, and I wanted to share with you uh, a, a pullout here, where if you, if you, if you look on this slide here, uh, and I'm, uh, to be honest with you, I've never seen this before, in terms of exchange movements, uh, where the, the British pound depreciated against the US dollar by 11.96%, and the Canadian dollar by 6.34%. But the Jamaican dollar appreciated against the US dollar by 1.96%. Now, when you have an appreciation of your currency, and the other major currencies are depreciating against the US dollar, and you are a significant earner of foreign exchange. As I said, 45% of our earnings come from overseas. It's going to have a significant negative impact 
on your numbers. Um, and and what, what I'd say, while I understand the intervention by the Central Bank of Jamaica in terms of the net international reserve, to create some about a stability um, in the exchange market, uh, when you have an appreciation like this, is going to create um, a challenge for those companies that earn most of their, or a lot of their um, income and cash flow from outside of Jamaica. So what does this translate into in terms of, of these headwinds? Well, our revenue continued to perform exceptionally well. Uh, we produced revenues of 142.9 million. Our, our revenue was, was up $13.6 billion or 10.5%. You recall a few years ago, we had actually set ourselves a target that we want to be at 100 billion by 2022, and we are at 142.9 billion. So we are significantly ahead of our target. Of course, we have set ourselves new, new targets, but I am extremely pleased in terms of the revenue growth of the company. In terms of profit before tax, you would say that we have produced profits of 10.2 billion. However, you'd notice that the profits are down 12.5%, and Andrew will get into some more details. But what I'll share with you is that our money services um, segment and the pressure brought on by our reduced margins um, uh, in our food division because of the significant increase in cost of sales, because of the inflationary pressures, and we are not able to pass on the, the price increases to our consumers anywhere in the world um, has impacted our margins for our food business. Well, I think it's, we need to put it in context. So you'll see um, on a normalized basis, I refer to it, our profits are down by 6.8%. And when I say normalized, in 2021, there was 895 million of non-recurring gains one of which is the acquisition of the, of the Scotia Life business in the Eastern Caribbean, and of course the pay protection program from the US federal government. And those two total 895 million, which is non-operational. Um, if we look to normal like 2022, you'd see that we, we sold an asset, and we made a gain of 170 million. So if you look at the real comparison, it's about 10.8 million compared to 10.1 million, a reduction of 6.88%. Profit before, profit after tax, that will flow through in terms of our numbers. We were produced 7.6 billion in profit after tax. GK Capital, in association with Trinidad and Tobago Unit Trust Corporation, is pleased to introduce GK Mutual Funds, the trust that helps you build your own wealth. Choose from any of our three mutual funds that best suit your financial goals. The GK USD Income Fund, an instrument to serve the vision you have for your business. Start with an initial investment of $1,000 and subsequent minimum investments of $100 monthly. The GK Jamaica Dollar Growth and Income Fund, designed to serve all your personal goals. Start with an investment of 15,000 Jamaican dollars with successive minimum monthly investments of 1,500 Jamaican dollars. And the GK Jamaica Dollar Money Market Fund, the investment instrument to fund the plans you have for your small business. It only takes an initial investment of 15,000 Jamaican dollars to start and subsequent minimum investments of 1,500. Whatever your financial goals are, we have the fund to get you there. Build your own wealth. Your financial security matters. Contact your GK Capital Wealth Advisor today. Telephone 876-932-3290. Email gkmutualfunds at gkco.com or visit our website at www.gk-capital.com. I wanted to share that video with you as part of our business highlights for, for, um, for 2023 and, and, and beyond. I am extremely excited about these, these, these funds. We had our launch with our 
partners from Trinidad and Tobago Unit Trust Corporation. They are by far the most experienced and largest unit trust managers in this part of the world. Um, and I think this is going to be a tremendous success. You will also know that this is a critical part of Grace Kennedy's strategy of sustainable growth and innovation. And it also um, a strategy of our financial inclusion strategy when you look at the minimum investments and the incremental amounts. So the GK US dollar income fund, the GK Jamaica dollar money market fund, and the GK dollar growth and income fund. I spent a lot of time with my team on this one and the unit trust in Trinidad. And I can assure you, this is going to be a significant growth area for the Grace Kennedy group of companies. Another exciting project which was launched, um, Audrey Togwell and, and, and myself and the team on February 21st, GK General Insurance entered into a long-term partnership agreement with Scotia Group Jamaica to be the exclusive underwriter for its agency policies. And this obviously includes home and homeowners coverage, motor coverage, bundle options to include cyber and gap insurance. And with the Scotia touch on it, no interest monthly payment options. Um, I have done my checks with my team and the, the performance, although early, early days yet, is significantly above our expectations. And I'd like to use this opportunity to, again, thank Scotia Group Jamaica Limited for choosing Grace Kennedy Insurance. And the Grace Kennedy Group of Companies, the partner has been the, the, the long-term underwriter for their agency policies. Um, and I think this one is going to be a win-win. Thanks again, Scotia. Much appreciated. We're going to do a good job together. Uh, M&A, um, uh, again, with, with Scotia, this is another one. Last year, August, I announced an acquisition of, of, of Scotia Eastern Caribbean. Um, late last year, I announced subject to regulatory approval, um, acquiring what we refer to as Acquisition 2 which now includes Barbados, Belize, Cayman Islands, Turks and Caicos, and British Virgin, British Virgin Islands. So by end of March, subject to regulatory approval, but we are doing well in terms of that checklist, in terms of getting regulatory approval. Um, Grace Kennedy is going to be in 12 countries in less than two years. So this is another segment that Grace Kennedy will be participating in. Um, in the Eastern Caribbean in terms of, of credit to life um, insurance business. There is another island which we have applied to, St. Martin, which is supposed to be very, very attractive based on our due diligence. And we're quite confident that, that we will announce very shortly that we will also be in St. Martin. So, um, so that 12 countries, um, I would say in a matter of months, could actually be 13 countries. Uh, again, this is another part of the Grace Kennedy strategy of us executing sustainable growth and, and, and innovation. And I expect significant growth in profits coming out of this acquisition. Uh, to support this, technology is going to be key. Um, and, and we had announced GK, FG, and HIM Technologies. We are partnering um, to, in, to, to develop an insurance platform. I've gone through it with Stephen Whittingham and, and the team. And uh, this is going to be um, a game changer going forward in terms of being efficient and being consumer centric um, with this technology here. It's going to be a competitive advantage for us with our new acquisitions. I expect that we should roll out the, 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 the new software in partnership with Haven Technologies by Q3 of, of this year. In terms of Hilo Food Store, um, you'd see there that we had an official opening in October in, in, in the grill. And this store is performing exceptionally well. Um, it's, it's, it's benefiting from the boom, as I would refer to it, Andrew, uh, in the tourism industry. Um, we're, we're like 160% above our target. That's 160% of our target. And, um, and it's performing strong. It's on a self-mile stretch, and it's ideally located 
um, for our visitors to Jamaica. And our, our, our Jamaicans to, to go and shop at, at Hilo Negril. I'm very excited about th this store, and I'm very excited about Hilo Food Store in terms of how it's performing as our retail food business. Solar energy, if you're going to compete in Jamaica, colleagues, um, it is my opinion that you have to invest in renewable energy. If you're going to compete in manufacturing um, in Jamaica, and if you hope to export, you got to get that solar renewable energy in place. So we have invested three million US, you'd see there, you'd see me there in our meat plant, which produces the great Vienna sausages, and the ham, and the frankfurters, etc. Breaking ground with Frank James and Carl Barnett and the team, and I, I believe that is going to result in us being significantly more efficient in terms of our energy costs throughout the Grace Kennedy group of companies. And we are prepared to look at every company in the Grace Kennedy group to see how we're going to reduce our energy costs. And, and you have to, there's no choice if you're going to compete um, regionally and even locally. Um, Catherine Speak, which is, um, you got me here guys, Catherine Speak, where we now own 70% of Catherine Speak, and as I said to you, it's the best water in, in Jamaica, best spring water in Jamaica. Uh, we now own 70% of Catherine Speak, so we'll now consolidate Catherine Speak as a subsidiary and not as an associated company, and let me thank um, our colleagues, Michael Bernard et al. Um, for facilitating this acquisition here. We have a number of plans in place to grow the Catherine Speak brand, including offering other SKUs of Catherine Speak. So uh, we are very excited about this and I'm expecting significant growth in Catherine Speak. And by the way, 876. So Grace Kennedy know we own the 876 brand and the Catherine Speak brand. And based on our strategic projections and um, going forward, we are going to be seeing significant growth in both brands. Stock buyback, um, the board of Grace Kennedy announced on March 1st, um, subject to regulatory approval, that we are, will be entering into a buyback. And these simple colleagues, um, we believe, and I'll share with you that we believe that the company's share price is considered to be below its true value and there's a clear opportunity to enhance shareholders' value. Uh, those of you who follow the stock exchange very closely, you would note that a number of the, of the stocks, the blue chip stocks, are down. Um, our thinking is that with the interest rates going up, investors are probably moving from, from, equi from the equity market to the fixed income market. Um, however, we believe that investing in stock, and all the research is sure, that the long-term investment in stock is in equities is still the best investment. So, um, so we are going to be entering to the, into the stock buyback program. Um, we are we have written to the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange for approval, so we await their uh, approval. One of the things that we also pride ourselves in, in terms of having um, international audit department or GIOE. We, we believe that, and I've said it in, a, in, in, in different forums, that as a, as a company, Grace Kennedy, we benchmark ourselves against the best in the world. And, um, and the International Professional Association of, of the Institute of Internal Auditors, um, they have done their review of Grace Kennedy's internal audit program, meeting with myself and, and the chairman of the audit committee, Peter Williams, and they have given us the highest rating achievable. And for a Jamaican company, for a Caribbean company, for Grace Kennedy, receiving the highest rating at achievable for, um, for internal audit is something that we take a lot of pride in. Pride in. And let us congratulate our internal audit team and my executives for, um, for doing a great job in terms of getting that rating. It's something that I'm personally proud of and the best is yet to come, as I would say. These are some products that I wanted to share with you. We're speaking about sustainable growth and innovation. We have done significant research, Dave DeCosta and, and, and his team, 
I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, but we, this slide is entitled Products with Mainstream Appeal. When you look at these products here, colleagues, um, when I say mainstream appeal, we are seeing a clear crossover where our products are being bought in the international market, not only by Caribbean people, but by mainstream. And by mainstream, I mean Hispanics and, and, and others that are non-Caribbean non folks. So our tropical rhythm is just doing exceptionally well in the USA, Canada, and the UK market. Exceptionally well showing growth. Um, you know, when we speak about when there's a crisis, there's an opportunity. This is a great example. So last year, uh, because of COVID-19 um, and because of, of, of other issues, um, bottles became very scarce and the demand was still there. So what did we do? We searched, we did our, um, uh, we did our research and we created um, tropical rhythms in the Tetra Pak and that is doing exceptionally well without cannibalizing the bottles. So we are seeing some real growth in tropical rhythms in the bottle and tropical rhythms um, in the Tetra Pak in all markets. If you look at the jerk, I'm extremely, extremely excited about the jerk category. Um, it has taken on a new dimension in terms of, of being a, a, a crossover appeal to the, to the mainstream market. And we are seeing a significant amount of growth there. And this is a very interesting story. When you look at Grace Kennedy, so we have engaged our farmers um, in St. Elizabeth. They are growing our peppers. We have said to the farmers in St. Elizabeth that we'd buy the peppers from you. Our Hunslow plant, um, we process the pepper mash, and then we move it to our Denver plant where um, our jerk sauce is produced. So when you talk about authentic Jamaican, you can't get more authentic Jamaican than the Grace Kennedy jerk sauce. And I'm extremely proud that we are providing employment to our farmers and to the factory workers in terms of producing these products. And I tell you, it's a great pride for me and the team when you walk into the Walmart or the Publix or the Loblaws or the Tesco and you see these products on the shelves and it's better pride when you see them moving off the shelves by, um, by all picking them up. So these products that you see here, um, when we say products with mainstream appeal, including our sauces, um, the Encona sauce and, the, and the, what I refer to as the red hot pepper sauce with our partners, Andrew Gray, um, they have the potential with the right marketing focus for significant, significant growth. And I'm expecting to see that as we move towards our 2030 vision. And there are a lot more in the pipeline, but I decided to show um, these five categories for you. The Grace Pat is doing well, um, especially the, the spicy beef, which is actually produced by uh, a, a factory majesty in, in, in Florida, highly of Florida, which Grace Kennedy owns 49% of, of that. So what you see strategically is the backward integration of, of Grace Kennedy into manufacturing, even overseas. And of course, the empanadas beef, as you know, that's a very, very popular Hispanic um, dish, and that is also doing exceptionally well. So, you know, if you visualize Grace Kennedy and the way we are going, um, these products are going to be significant grow, growers in the, in the future. Manufacturing, as I said before, Manufacturing is going to be a competitive advantage for the Grace Kennedy Group. We have now compute, um, completed the merger uh, of Nalcan, um, and it's going as, as planned. Um, we're going to see a lot of efficiency there, and we're going to be more um, uh, cost competitive, not only locally, but internationally. The big target that I'll hold up um, for our investors and our shareholders is that we want to increase the exports to 50% by 2025. We want to earn more foreign exchange for Jamaica, 50% by 2025. We're currently at about 30%. Uh, my management team, um, Zach Mars and Carl and, and everybody, Andrew Wildish, 
uh, we are very, very confident that uh, we're going to hit these numbers and we're going to be investing heavily behind manufacturing to ensure that we can see this export growth initiative. Um, as I said before in, uh, in other forums, um, that if Jamaica is going to grow on a sustainable basis, export has to be a key strategic driver um, to grow our economy. And Grace Kennedy, we see manufacturing and export as a competitive advantage because we have the distribution network overseas. We have offices in um, distribution centers in Florida, Atlanta, um, New Jersey, um, Toronto, um, London, you know, so, um, so we expect that our manufacturing is going to be a competitive advantage. And we're also facilitating it in terms of our distribution business, other Jamaican manufacturers, and you'd have read an article where um, one company said that uh, we are distributing for them and they're exporting semi containers to us. So, you know, we are there to support other other Jamaican companies who wish to break into the, um, to the, to the market overseas. GK1, wow, I'm so excited about GK1. I'm doing extremely well. Um, you know, my, my team will tell you that uh, people are sending remittances on a Sunday night instead of going to um, the location. So you'd see there on weekends and even on public holidays. It's been, it's been used. Um, there you see we can receive money with our payments, send money. You're going to see the insurance as a platform, banking, applying for your credit card online, and of course the, 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 the rewards. One of the exciting um, uh, uh, features or the scalability of GK1 is that we're actually going to be rolling out GK1 um, uh, in Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago in 2023. Uh, we have invested a lot in, in digital, um, close to 1 billion Jamaican dollars. And I, as I said, you know, when, when I met with the consultants, you know, colleagues, and this is three or four years ago with COVID at the, at the, um, at the, at the, at the top of our mind. And um, the consultant said to us, um, transforming digital is not a nice to do anymore. It's a matter of survival. Well, we decided at Grace Kennedy to press that button and invest very heavily. And it is showing that we have made the right decision. When you look at the growth in all of the features um, for GK1, the growth is exponential and continues for 2023 to be significant. And we expect that level of growth to continue for 2023 and way, way, way beyond. This is the new world, colleagues. In terms of money services, I wanted to spend a, a minute on this. Those of you who would have studied our accounts, you would have seen um, that our money services business is down, which had a material impact on the Grace Kennedy group of companies. You know, I like to say to my team, I never externalize performance. Uh, we need to look in and see what we can do better, how we can be more efficient. Having said that, um, we have been partners with Western Union for close to 34 years. And I have been around for about 27 years of that 34 years. And this is the first time I can recall in the history of Jamaica, even with the 2008 financial crash, um, where remittances based on the BOJ numbers is, is down by 1.6%. Um, that might seem immature, but when you're talking about $3.8 billion, US dollars, it is significant. And that down, um, that reduction impacted the Grace Kennedy group of companies. And while this is Jamaica down 1.6%, if you look at the World Bank numbers, the Caribbean on a whole is down 3.4% for the Caribbean. I have done a lot of research I've done. I've had a lot of discussions with our consumers from the sending market. And one of the things that is very, very clear to me um, is that the inflationary pressures in the U.S. had a significant impact of remittances coming into the Caribbean, especially Jamaica. And I'll give you an example. Um, I was having a discussion with a gentleman from California, and he said to me, Don, listen, um, just to give you um, an example of, of what is happening as it relates to inflation, 
he said it would cost him $35 um, to, to fill his tank uh, three or four years ago. And because of the pressures of inflation and gas prices going up, it's now costing him 70 So basically what he's saying to me is that his disposable income to send money back home has shrunk and shrunk significantly. So I believe that the inflation is the primary reason why we are seeing this reduction uh, in remittances coming into the Caribbean. And the numbers are there. But what are we doing about it? We have been working very, very, very closely with Western Union, our partners, for 30 odd years. And we have come up with a strategy called MPAC. We talk about revenue and targeted marketing. We want to grow the market. And we want to make it um, more attractive for our brothers and sisters throughout the, the, the Caribbean diaspora, USA, which is by far the biggest market, Canada and the UK, to send uh, money back home. So, you know, we're speaking about optimizing our network, um, the omnichannel experience, um, that app, the GK1 app, which we, we, we spoke about earlier. So we're looking at pricing, um, you know, being more consumer-centric, compliance is key, always will be, and of course, marketing. And the good news is that for 2023, um, early days yet, colleagues, but we are already seeing a, a closing of the gap in terms of the reduction of transactions coming in. Um, I, I'm waiting to see the BOJ num numbers, but we expect um, to see some amount of improvement in our, in our remittances. Um, breaking news, as I'm sure, those of you in the media would like to hear breaking news. This is the first time it's going to be said publicly. Um, I'm not in a position to call names, but I can assure you it's just a matter of timing um, before the formal announcement is made. Where the first thing is that we have signed uh, with a major uh, retail chain in Jamaica where 50 odd plus locations will become Western Union locations and we expect that to be announced very, very shortly. So our network now is over 200 and we're going to be adding 50 more locations um, for Western Union which is going to make it um, even more attractive for our customers um, to go and get their, their, their funds. I'm very excited about this and this partnership that we were forming also has Caribbean legs where we can exp uh, expand to the Caribbean. Very, very excited about this. It has been long in coming. We have worked hard on this one. But finally, we are there at the contractual stage um, to, 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 to roll out. Um, another breaking news is that we are about to sign. Well, we have signed. It's subject to regulatory approval. We are one of the largest financial institutions um, in the region and one of the largest potentially digital platform in Jamaica that we are going to be through Grace Canada Money Services and Western Union will be offering our digital remittance um, services. And that again um, is going to make a significant difference to our digital offering for our money services business. So when you look at it in terms of going forward, uh, while there are external factors that are impacting our remittance business, which is a core business for Grace Kennedy, when there is a crisis, there is opportunity. Um, and we are working very, very hard to ensure not only that we grow the market for the Caribbean and Jamaica, but we are also looking at how can we be more innovative uh, and, and making it more consumer-centric in terms of what we're offering for money services. And those two partnerships that I have announced this afternoon um, is going to make a significant difference to our GKMS business going forward. So if we talk about 2023, let me say to the investors that what I've shared with you um, is, is a summary really of our strategic initiatives. And I have no doubt that 2023 is going to be showing um, positive results, um, despite the challenging environment they are in, both for revenue and for profits, with improved 
stockholders' value. I want to remind our colleagues here about the 2030 vision. I will share with you that it has really, really resonated with my team in Grace Kennedy. Um, we, we, did a, we did a survey of our team because, you know, if you are moving with a vision, and as I said to my team at the business conference where we have 500 of our, our, our senior executives there, and I, I presented the 2030 vision to them. Guys, we have to dream big. And that's what Grace Kennedy is about. You know, that's what Grace Kennedy is about. When we started the company in, in 1922, our revenue was, was 15,000 pounds, and now we're over 800 million pounds. Uh, who would believe that $800 million, who would believe that this great company would be 50 companies in all over the world? So the next 10 years is going to be very, very exciting for the Grace Kennedy Group. So this, these are our targets. And, you know, 70% of our revenue and profits outside of Jamaica, we're going to have profits of, uh, of revenues of $2.1 billion, profit before tax of $250 million, we're doing a lot of work. We have engaged Broadspan, one of our investment bankers. We have had meetings with Citibank about our overseas listing, so the work is progressing um, there. Um, our employees, as I said, to, um, and I want to use this opportunity to thank all the Grace Kennedy employees from the bottom of my heart for all the sacrifice, all the de dedication, all the commitment that you have shown to this great company here. I know it has been difficult um, from COVID and for 2022. But um, I want to let all of you know that I appreciate it. You cannot have a successful company unless you have motivated employees. And that has to be the main focus as we journey towards 2030 vision, our 2030 vision. Our, 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 our team members have to be fully aligned with these objectives. They have to understand the role that they're going to play with these objectives. And it is my responsibility as the group CEO to ensure that we develop our team um, to, to, to do their best in terms of, of these objectives. And it's, we're talking about creating a better life and for our, our team members to attain wealth and achieve common goals. Um, as you would have seen from our announce, uh, announcement, NASDAQ Consulting has been engaged. Gail Masalaman is leading this one here with ESG. Um, principles and it's going to be a win-win-win. It's a competitive advantage for us. Um, what I've noticed in terms of my presentations on ESG, for some reason, Andrew, um, the younger generation seems to get very excited uh, about ESG. Um, and we are going to set out. We have, if you look on page 74 of our annual report for 2021. Um, it's all laid out there in terms of specific targets. And as I said, what gets measured gets done. Specific targets for ESG. And the truth is that, as a consultant said to me, you know, about digital, I'm going to say to everybody that ESG going forward, if you are a true international company, and as I've I classified Grace Kennedy as an international company headquartered in Jamaica, if you do have a robust ESG policy, policy with measurable targets, um, it's not going to be a nice to have anymore, it's going to be a must have. So investments will be based uh, on ESG in terms of our environmental, social, and our governance principles. So colleagues, um, thank you very much. This, and I, you know, I'd like to finish with this slide here, that um, you know, at the center of Grace Kennedy, where we change and we move into the future, there's one fundamental um, core, the core value of Grace Kennedy will never change. And you see it in the middle there, we care. And we speak about our customers and consumers, our communities, our creed, honesty, integrity, and trust. Our word is our bond. Our team members, as I mentioned before, and our shareholders providing them with a strong uh, return. Um, uh, uh, these are in the DNA of the Grace Kennedy Group. That's why we are able to celebrate 101 years. And um, uh, this year, and I'll say it again, um, the best is yet to come for this great company. Thank you very much. I'm now going to hand over to my CFO, Mr. Andrew Mesada, who will share some slides with you, and then we're going to open up for questions. 
Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Just going to give you some highlights on the financial statements for 2022. Some of them have been touched on before, so I won't go through all the details. But first off, I want to say that um, we had strong top line growth where our revenue grew by over 10% in 2022. What we saw is uh, good growth on our food trading segment, where over 11 billion of that uh, $13.6 billion increase was represented on the food trading side. In terms of our operating profits, what you'll see is that we were down. A lot of this, as we mentioned, um, was the result of, of headwinds that we faced, where we had uh, rising inflation, we had uh, interest rates going up, and then there were some lingering supply chain challenges, um, as well as increased raw material and freight costs. So a part of this really um, affected the core operating performances and depressed margins. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, money services was challenged um, because of the inflationary pressures. Now, uh, I'm going to touch a little bit on the non-recurring uh, gains, but before I do that, just to kind of uh, finish on the key highlights, you'll see that our assets, we ha have a strong asset position of over 200 billion now, and this is really bolstering um, the group's uh, position in, in the market. In terms of our stockholders' equity, we see that that has now increased to over $70 billion, a 6.5% increase. And this strong equity position has also enabled us to pay out higher dividends, which I'll touch on later. Just to go over the performance of the group in terms of non-recurring gains, we did mention that in 2021, there were just under $900 million in non-recurring gains from two non-core uh, non activities. Similarly, in 2022, uh, a gain of $170 million which really related to uh, a non-core uh, business that we uh, disposed of. Now, without these non-recurring gains, you'd see that our profit after tax uh, would have been down by just over 7% compared to uh, the 15% that, that the audited accounts are showing. So on a normalized basis, we'd have been down um, in single digits. In terms of our dividend payout, as I mentioned, the group's strong equity position, as well as our strong cash position, has enabled us to pay out more dividends. So for the first time in our history, we actually paid out over $2 billion in dividends for 2022, and this in our 100th year. And you would have seen that we announced um, on the 1st of March that for 2023, we're going to have our first interim dividend payable on the 6th of April, uh, again, it's going to be higher than last year at 50 cents per stock unit. Now, in terms of our segment results, on the revenue side, three of our four business segments showed increases in revenues, and those three uh, segments that have grown have all grown by more than 10%. So strong growth overall on the revenue side. For money services, as we had mentioned before, uh, in Jamaica, f affecting Jamaica in particular has been the foreign currency inflows into our country. Uh, as was mentioned um, by our CEO, uh, a lot of our international um, uh, trading partners, and in particular countries where our diaspora are, are uh, located in, those countries have had significant uh, inflation for 2022, which would have affected disposable income and the ability of our uh, remittance customers to send funds back to the Caribbean. Nonetheless, within money services, our Cambio business did show growth for 2022. In terms of our insurance business, you see that growing by 15%. Now, the insurance uh, portfolio has done well, especially on the general insurance side. Both, Ge Jamaica, both GK General and Key Insurance showed strong revenue growth. And then our acquisition of the Scotia business in the Eastern Caribbean, now renamed GK Life, that also had its first full year of operations in 2022, which showed good growth and contributed to our profits as well. Back in investments, we saw that for First Global Bank, they had growth both in the loan portfolio as well as its deposit base, and that translated to improved revenue performance. 
And then on the food trading side, uh, both our domestic and international food businesses have been doing well. On the domestic side, we saw that for our distribution companies, they did very well, both the distributors of our Grace and Grace owned brands, as well as our distributors of our third priority brands from companies like Procter & Gamble. Also, um, Hilo, they opened a new store in the grill and that has been doing well and, and contributing to revenue. On the international side, we saw that, especially in the USA, both Grace brand and the Lafay brands have been doing very well, showing strong growth. In terms of profits, how has that translated in, in profits? What you'll see is that two of our four business segments showed improved profits. We mentioned earlier about money services being impacted and our insurance business uh, mainly affected by higher claims costs coming uh, on, the, on, on the heels of increased inflation. And then in 2021, we did have a, a situation where there was a non-recurring benefit for, for, for one of the insurance companies, Key Insurance, um, who adjusted their reinsurance program, but that did not um, uh, recur in 2022. In terms of our banking and investment segments, you now see that uh, we're earning over a billion dollars from that segment. So all of our uh, business segments now earn at least $1 billion or more. And then what we saw is, uh, apart from First Global Bank, our GK Capital business had uh, launched uh, three IPOs in 2022, which bolstered its profitability. On the food side, again, you see our food business uh, showing growth. One of the things I'd say about food or food business now is that that segment now shows uh, just over half or contributes just over half of the group's profits at 54%. So um, a very strong showing. It's still um, things that we have to work through, especially on the money services side. But what we see is that um, our profits, our pre-tax profits of $10.2 billion um, uh, have, have done well and translated in our ability to fund the business, uh, our ability to look for acquisition targets and also return a shareholder uh, dividend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. We're getting quite a few. Um, we're getting quite a few questions in. Let's try and get my papers together. Um, th thanks a lot again, Andrew. I, okay. Let Let us try and get through as much as we can. And Suzanne, if we can get through get within the time frame, we'll we'll post the the answers. All right. Okay. Um, let's go. Um, What's the progress of Scotia Insurance Caribbean transaction, which is expected to close this quarter? Um, yes, we are on track. Um, I expect that we would have received all r regulatory approvals by uh, or before the end of March, so uh, the transaction should be um, finalized by the end of March, as I said um, in my uh, presentation. Um, there's a question here which I'm not sure. I think, I think the person is mixing Grace Kennedy up with another company, but it refers to 138 student living, which uh, I'm, Grace Kennedy is not in any way associated or, or, or anything with 138 student living. So I'm, I'm not sure what, what, what that is um, about at all. Maybe you can send in a clarification note to my team here, and I'll try my, my, I'll try my best to... To, to answer it. What's the current GK retirement age and succession planning for the key leadership roles? Um, that, that's a good question. So Grace Kennedy, you have an option to retire at 60. Uh, you can continue to a maximum of 65 with the approval of the, of the group CEO. So if one reaches 60, they become pensionable. Um, if they wish to continue, they will express that desire to continue with their divisional directors who will meet with me and we can discuss um, any approval for, um, for extension to a maximum age of 65. Um, succession plan is taken very, very seriously at Grace Kennedy. So every year I have to present to the, to the corporate governance committee and I can tell you it's a very detailed exercise with a lot of forms where I have to share with the Corporate Governance Committee uh, potential successors for my role as a group CEO 
or not only present to them, I have to share with them what am I doing to develop the potential successors to be in a readiness period um, at the appropriate time when I'm ready to retire. I also have to present to them everybody that is reporting to, to me, all the senior executives, Grace Kennedy Group, their succession plan and what I'm doing to ensure that the level below the people reporting to me have the adequate succession planning in place. So that's one thing Grace Kennedy, uh, we have always pride ourselves on in terms of robust succession planning and, um, and it's, it's, it's a board report or a corporate governance and nomination committee report that I have to report every year um, to the corporate governance and, and nomination um, co committee. Um, other questions coming up, coming up, coming up. All right. Um, what is the update on the online platform to view investments account? Uh, Akima Brown. Um, I, I assume that you're speaking about GK Capital Akima, because as you know, First Cobalt Bank and our insurance companies, we have, um, we, we have uh, one of the best online um, platforms, um, Global Ac Access for, for FGB and GKG Online for GKGI. So I'm not sure if you're talking about, if you're talking about um, GK Capital, um, um, just for IPOs, uh, I think we're going to have that by certainly sometime during 2023. But I, I would like if you can clarify that question um, with, our, with, our, with our team members so I can be in a better position to answer directly. But I'm assuming that you're speaking to GK Capital and I would say to you certainly um, sometime during this, this year. Thanks for that question. And actually use your question as a follow-up with my team to ensure that we are on track. Um, to deliver. I'm getting a lot of questions, um, Philip Burgess and other colleagues. Um, uh, one, one minute here, I'm just trying to get my... So the, the, the question is, um, the, the question is um, about the international property reinsurance market. Uh, which, which, um, which has hardened um, and, uh, because of the hardening of the, re property, the international property market, it has resulted um, in a reduction of, of capacity and rates have gone up. We have managed to successfully, in terms of the Grace Kennedy Group, um, Key Insurance and, 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 and GKGI negotiate um, our reinsurance capacity, which is good for us, notwithstanding that we have seen increases ranging from 15 to, to, to 40 percent. And reinsurance rates have actually gone up 20 to, to, to 40 percent. So, um, so, you know, that is something that we have to bear in, in mind. Um, Philip, you're asking about GK Re. Um, yes, that's a great question, and I know my reinsurance colleagues, Jordan, Tate, and Stephen, we are looking to see how we can maximize the allocation of capital uh, with, with GK um, Re. But we saw this coming in terms of hardening of the market, and it's something that has to be managed very carefully. The good news is that Grace Kennedy, we have, in fact, negotiated well for, for the year. Okay, um, one of the things that I, I, I'm being very careful of, um, and it's about that question with, with, with one, 38, student living. Obviously, as you know, um, and I'm backtracking a bit, that you know, there, there, are, there are confidential agreements that we would enter as advisors to various companies, and I don't think um, it would be appropriate for me to um, to expand on that any further. I have to be very careful. Okay. Um, oh, it's Stephen Jackson. Stephen, this is a... Uh, Catherine's Peak Distribution is limited by its narrow and mountainous location. Is GK thinking of laying pipes from the mountains to the flat to avoid heavy trucks moving through the Blue Mountains? Stephen, uh, I must confess that we have not thought about that because 
um, I think that is going to be significant, significant um, capital expenditure to, to do that, and it will make the water totally uncompetitive. As you know, when you look at the, even the NWC and the cost of laying pipes, you're talking about millions and millions and millions of, of US dollars. We have a plan in place, early days yet, but I will share hopefully by, by the AGM in terms of how we're going to deal with improving the supply of, of Catherine Speak and 876 going forward. Um, those of you who consume Catherine Speak and 876, you would have recognized that during the summer months we were very low on supply. Um, but we are putting in place the necessary strategies to take care of that. But Steve, um, you know, I'll share with the team and my consultants about laying off pipes, but I think that is going to be extremely expensive and I, to be honest with you, I haven't thought of that. The Ghana tax case, we're still waiting on a date. We keep following up our lawyers in the Caribbean. Um, we have employed one of the top um, lawyers, Claude Denbo, um, to, to, to look at it for us. He's following up with the, with the court systems in Guyana, and, um, and we haven't gotten a date yet. But our lawyers in, the, in um, Claude Denbo and others that are representing us feel very confident that we're going to have a very successful outcome, but let us, let us see how that goes. Other questions, anything else coming through? Um, reinsurance again. International listing, I did say that in my, in my presentation that we have actually been having meetings with our investment banker, um, Broadspan, and we are also, we had meetings with Citibank. I would say there are some mechanics in terms of the accounting. Andrew, you are working with Pricewaterhouse on that. But um, David Rose, I would say that we are on track. It's, it's not going to be an overnight, um, overnight strategy, but we're working our way through very, very carefully in terms of international listing. And I would share with you the feedback that, I've been, that we got from uh, one of our investment bankers. Basically, they sent to us that by risking the foods, the timing is right because of, there's a lot of, of, on Wall Street, a lot of buzz and hype about ethnic foods. So um, the, the initial feedback has actually been, been, been very positive. But we have some work to do internally before we, um, before we press the button on, on this thing. In which market and business sector have you experienced the greatest negative pressure on profit margins? I, I would say um, our overseas um, food market has been the one that has been most challenging. If you were to ask me specifically which market, it has been the Canadian market that has come under significant pressure where um, the large retailers over there um, are basically not entertaining any price increases at all, are being very difficult. And, you know, they have their job to do and we have our job to do. But I would say Canada has been the market that has been uh, mostly impacted. And then, of course, the UK and the USA. Notwithstanding that, uh, we continue to grow in revenue. So the gross margin flow into the bottom line, um, we are doing well. And um, 2023 has actually started off extremely well. For, um, for our food companies overseas, with the exception of Canada, where we are working through some challenges there. But I expect Canada to start to show good improvement by, um, by the second half of this year. Thank, thanks for that question. One of the things when we think about profit margins also, you know, um, um, Khalil, um, our bank in Jamaica, FGB, um, with deposit rates going up and we are not able to pass on, or we have to be careful how we pass on um, our increased loan rates that has to be managed very carefully. Um, the net interest margin for our banks has gone down also, and that is something that we have to work through very, very carefully because you don't want to increase your rates to the point where 
our customers are can, um, can't pay and then you run into the delinquency issue. So, um, so we'll be having a lot of discussions with our customers in terms of repackaging and refinancing loans, um, etc. But definitely Canada um, for that question. Um, I'm trying to see if they're... Um, we asked about Canopy. <coughs> um, Canopy had a very, very challenging year, I must confess. Where we saw growth in revenue, um, medi medical inflation was significant. We talk about general inflation. We talk about medical inflation. That was a, that was a killer. Um, and what, we, what, what happened there, we saw loss ratios for some of our clients going way, way above, like 150%. So, of course, you know that we had to absorb that, 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 that excess. So what we are doing now, we are looking at repricing um, to some of our customers. Mark you, some of our customers are saying to us that they can't afford it and they've gone elsewhere or decided to self-insure. But I think it's better to have a smaller, profitable business than, um, than, than having a business that is, that is making losses. We have started the year for Canopy. First two months, Knockwood uh, has been good, significantly. Um, significant improvement compared to the first two months of last year. I, I believe that Canopy, is, in terms of its profitability, is going to see a much improved performance. But um, um, David, you have asked that question. Um, I'd love you to do some research on medical inflation because, you know, I, I estimate it's certainly over 50 percent in terms of prices for drugs and, and general medical inflation. So it, it's a, it's a, it's a tough one. Um, uh, the TNT, um, TTEC, and the whole buyback. Yes, I'm aware that JMMB has their application in. So are we. We wrote to the TTSEC. Um, we're, we're hoping that they would look on our application in a favorable way. Um, you know, and you know, one of the things, David, which I have been very consistent for, for so over a decade. Um, if we're talking about a, a, a true Caribbean capital market, especially as we speak about an equity market, there has to be some harmonization of the rules of the various exchanges. Or is you going to have anomalies and an inefficient capital equity market? And I would again encourage um, the Jamaica Stock Exchange and the Trinidad Stock Exchange and the Barbados Stock Exchange. Uh, we, we need some harmonization of the rules uh, of the exchange because, you know, um, you know, we could go ahead and do the buyback um, from, from our home exchange in Jamaica. However, we need approval from Trinidad. And as you said, um, my understanding is that JMMB has been waiting for, for over a year and they cannot do their buyback. Um, I, I hope to God ours don't last for over a year. But um, again, I, I'm making the call that we need a harmonization of, um, of our, our rules and our Securities Act if we're really going to have an efficient um, capital market. And the market is already thin, thin. I know that the University of West Indies, Dr. Indiana Mintaka is working on a project which I have offered to help. Um, but that is going to be very, very important. I'm um, asking about Blue Dot. I want to emphasize again that Blue Dot um, is a passive investment for the Grace Kennedy group of companies, um, meaning that we're not involved in the management at all. And I think we have about two people. I know, you know this is the word, I think. Uh, we have about two people uh, on the board of directors. It's, it's run independently by, by the, the chief executive officer, Lauren Peart. We provide governance principles, as you saw, that we are very strong in that area. And Lauren is good at, at what he's doing. Um, but I, I think data intelligence is the future. Um, our next strategic objective for, for, for Blue Dot, having pulled it together, um, is to do an IPO for Blue Dot, and we are hoping that that can be done sooner than later with Grace Kennedy. We will, in fact, reduce our, our shareholdings in Blue Dot. But we are extremely passive, and we have no um, say in the day-to-day -day operations of the company.
More questions? How am I doing for time? I'm okay. Oh, when will the GK um, 5K run resume? Um, that's an interesting question. I saw the EU when it seems to be very popular. Um, so that's an encouragement for us. The GK um, 5K run um, was really through our, our foundation. Um, I'll have a chat with Sandrina Davis to see if it can be fit into our plans. But one of the things that I remember very clearly, it was extremely difficult to fit into the diary of all the 5K sh um, runs that were scheduled. And I think we were scheduled to, um, the only date we could have received was July, which wasn't convenient for anybody because it was, it was so hot. So, um, but having raised it and I've saw, I saw the turnout for the EU, um, I know we are downtown Kingston, um, Grace Kennedy. So I raised again with my team co um, um, colleagues and, um, and see where we can go from there. But it was straight fundraising for our, our, um, our GK Foundation where we could support education. And as you know, we are sending over 1,300 children um, who could not otherwise afford a proper education to, to, to school. Um, so I've circled it. I'll, I'll get back to you in terms of um, first to investigate whether it would make sense. Um, Andrew, this one is for you. Dividends of 50 cents is not bad. Given the Jamaica equity market today, how can you get <laughs> how can you get to a full dollar? You need to make more profits and generate cash. Yes, yeah, yes. Go ahead, Andrew. Thank you for the question. So I mean, um, that's talking about a quarter, uh, and we pay dividends four times a year. Um, to, to double that now, um, we really need to uh, continue to make good profits and grow overseas as well. Uh, so I can't give a, a timeline. Uh, on that, um, but certainly in keeping in line with our 2030 vision, I mean, that's the traje trajectory that we intend to, to head towards. So we balance it between growth as well, because some of our cash we do retain um, for growth within the business as well as acquisitions. So we have to balance um, growth with returns to shareholders. But as you can see, the objective is to steady increase, steadily increase our return in cash to shareholders. Yes. So, um, and I'll remember that, uh, Al Edwards from our today is the person who asked that question. I'll remember that a part of our strategic growth initiative, um, and we have a decent pipeline for mergers and acquisition, which require internal cash because at Grace Kennedy, we don't like to leverage too much or borrow too much in terms of these acquisitions. Uh, we, have a, we, have a, um, we have a ratio that we try and stick to. So we have to be careful in terms of our aggressiveness, in terms of paying out dividends versus the acquisition pipeline and the future growth of the, of the company. But as Andrew said, the intention is to improve the dividend yield of the Grace Kennedy, Grace Kennedy stock. Um, Keith Callistab, Keith, how are you? I haven't heard from you for a long time in terms of questions. Good to have you back in the investment forum. Are you planning more investments in Guyana? And if not, why not? Yes, we are um, planning more investments in Guyana. Um, we had a team over there recently. A couple of things that I'd say to you, I have already indicated an interest to the Guyana government and I've copied Jampro on it to, um, to start an insurance company um, in Guyana. As you see that we have been expanding nicely by the acquisition of Scotia Life. We would like to extend that to Guyana both for PNC and for life insurance. I've not gotten a response yet, but hopefully I'll get a response shortly, and hopefully Jam Pro will follow up for me. Interestingly, um, the feedback that I'm getting up in terms of opportunities for Grace Kennedy um, in Guyana, which we will do uh, um, further research and due diligence, is actually agriculture and agro-processing, uh, which I found very interesting. So um, that is an area that we're going to probably investigate um, if it makes sense for us to um, look at agriculture and agro-processing uh, in, in Guyana. But initially, our interest would be in financial services, and I've already indicated an interest to the Guyana government, the Guyanese government, and I've copied our investment um, arm in Jamaica to see if they could assist us in, in, in that regard. Our Western Union, 
business, Keith in Guyana is doing extremely, extremely well. And in fact, it's the fastest growing market for our Western Union partnership um, in the English speaking Caribbean. So Guyana is hot stuff and yes, we're gonna play in, in that market. More questions? All right, let's go. I'm, I'm ready to go. All right. Um, all right. Um, on March first, uh, um, on March first, twenty twenty-three, the GK board announced, and, and this is Romario, uh, announced and authorized Baba to increase its shares value. Stock split and the possibility. Uh, Romario, we have been discussing. I'm going to ask Andrew to comment on it because I'd asked him to do an exercise on the, on the, on the stock split. But, um, and I guess it's kind of making a 360 uh, in terms of that decision. Um, but what we're saying now with the market so soft and the Jamaica Stock Exchange Index um, actually showing a decline and the Grace Kennedy stock um, sh showing a, a decline. Um, I, I certainly don't believe that a stock split would be appropriate uh, at this time to put more liquidity of the stock in the market. I think the buyback in terms of enhancing and maximizing shareholders' value um, is the right strategy. And I'm not sure if you want to com comment more on that. Thanks. Uh, no, I think, I think you've covered it. I mean, generally, stock splits work well you know, when, when the stock price has reached a certain um, level that is kind of seen as uh, unattractive in terms of its it's too high, but in this market, with a soft market, you generally f would find that um, it wouldn't really increase liquidity much by, by making your, your stock price cheaper by dividing it in, into smaller um, increments. So, so I think, as you said, um, in terms of the stock buyback, it would be more representative of what the market situation is now. Okay, thanks. I hope that answers your question, um, uh, Romario. Andrew, I'm not sure if you have the accounts in front here. Somebody's asking about note 14 of your audited accounts. I noted a line item, limitation assets due to uncertainty of obtaining economic benefit. Can yes. you explain what that is about? Sure. So note 14 has to do with the um, post-employment benefits. And I think the part of that note that you're referring to specifically has to do with the pension asset recognized on the balance sheet you would have noticed that that pension asset recognized has reduced for 2022. Uh, the idea of an asset ceiling really means that from a, an, a pension asset perspective, um, the Grace Kennedy Group doesn't have direct access to any pension surpluses. The way that the, the pension surplus, uh, the company is able to um, benefit from a, a pension surplus is actually to reduce its, its contributions. Now, uh, what you'll notice is with rising interest rates, um, and an inflationary environment, uh, what that can, what that can uh, cause is that the amount that you can claw back as a contribution holiday is reduced. So that asset ceiling is really saying that there's a limitation of, of how much the, um, the company can um, benefit in the future from reduced contributions. But it doesn't mean in any way that the pension asset of, uh, of, of, our, of our pensioners is, is reduced. In fact, that asset ceiling is really showing that there's um, additional assets available to our pensioners. Um, um, Khalil, again, is asking about uh, have we given any consideration to paid, uh, sorry, some of these questions I'm seeing for the first time, more benefits to your employees, such as paid maternity leave and more time for maternity leave. But, well, um, Kylie, what that says is that uh, we have an HR council, um, which is a wide cross section of the executive leadership of Grace Kennedy, and they make recommendations to the executive committee, which I chair. Um, last year, they made a recommendation about paternity leave, which was unanimously approved. Um, these items are on the agenda. We are following it closely in the market. Um, and as soon as a recommendation is made, um, we will make the appropriate um, d decision. Um, are any plans to produce items not considered as ethnic items? Vernon Forrester. Vernon is an interesting question and, uh, and it's something that we spent a, 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 a lot of time on. So um, if you look at our, and, and yeah, we we'll have to look at what we we'll define as ethnic. So one of our largest um, products in the Grace Kennedy Group, and a lot of people 
um, um, don't realize that it's actually nourishment, eh? which is technically is a milk-based drink, a meal replacement drink, and, and is not considered ethnic. So what we have to do, and I, that's why I love Steve Jobs, you know, he starts from the consumer, and we look and see what the consumer is, is, is asking for, and then we carry it to our research and development um, unit to see what we can come up with. Um, Dave DeCosta and his unit, um, yes, we look at, 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 at non-ethnic food, but what I'll say to you, the five items that, um, that I've shared with you, you have to be focused. It takes a lot of marketing support to back those items when you are in an international market. It's big bucks. So you have to be careful that you don't spread yourself too thin in terms of looking at non-ethnic uh, market and leave what you consider to be your core market um, out that has significant, significant potential for growth. Uh, we have done some research and for example, tropical rhythms. Um, tropical rhythm has a potential to double what it's doing now um, in a few years. What that is going to call for marketing support is going to call for investment in our manufacturing unit because we produce tropical rhythms um, here in, in, in Jamaica. So what I'd say to you, yes, we look at opportunities, what the consumer need, but at the same time, you need to focus on your, on your core items to ensure that you maximize the full potential of those items. I'm not sure, and, and be careful that you don't spread yourself too thin and you don't have the marketing dollar uh, or resources to support these items. Because when you're playing in the international market, you're playing against the big boys and you have to have that, that, that support there. Um, the buyback, oh, we spoke about stock split. Andrew, I'm not sure if you have these numbers in front of you. I doubt it, but we can get back to Keith. Uh, about maturity versus availability, the bank and the insurance, the bond portfolio, you have an idea of the ratio? Um, well, this is really going to be shown in note three, which is our financial risk note. Um, but it's something that our ALCO committee looks very closely at in terms of um, any kind of liquidity gap that exists. Yeah, all right. I must say, Andrew Masada is an encyclopedia. He remembers every note um, for the financial statements. And when I was here for and you had um, 20 notes, it was a lot easier. You know, when you have, how much you have now, Andrew? I have 42. 42. And Andrew remembers every note. So, Keith, what can I say to you? Look at note three, and there the answer lies. And if you have any further questions, please ask our encyclopedia, um, Andrew Masada, for, for the answer. Um, I think I've covered everything. More questions? Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, everybody. This is question number 30. Some of them were duplicated, but that's fine. Uh, what are the challenges finding skill and experience living in Jamaica? How has this impacted the different business lines? Great question. Great. Khalil, you're on form. Can, can you find out where is he from or her? Where is she from the media uh, um, uh, for me? Um, yes, we have been challenged. And I'll I tell you what. Um, so the, the first challenge that we have was in our retail unit at, at, at our high-low chain of supermarkets. And sometimes I have to apologize to our customers at high-low because we just can't get enough cashiers um, to, 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 to serve and it has been extremely, extremely difficult to recruit ca cashiers. Um, so our retail part of our business is having a challenge in terms of recruiting um, what you refer to as skill and experience labor. The other big area and there's a specific factory that we are, we are having a challenge with is actually our meat plant in Savannah where the demand um, and the performance of that business has gone up significantly. I don't want to call any numbers or it's my colleagues from the food division um, would, would, would probably be upset with me. But Vienna sausages in Jamaica, um, conservatively, and I'm, going to, and I'm going to use a percentage, over the last five years or so, has grown by over 200% believe it or not, and continues to grow. It's unbelievable how Vienna sausages are growing. 
Um, so may I attribute it to, to Shelley and what I think we have a great product. Um, that factory is having a hard time keeping up with demand labor to produce what, what we want. Um, um, Carl Barnett is trying his best um, to see how we can plug that gap. What, what I can say is that women in the factory, I was, I went down there, you saw the, the, the picture of me, um, the, the, the solar plant, and I can tell you, um, uh, more women are working <laughs> in the factory than, than men um, in, in, in Savlamar, which I, which I think is a good thing. Um, uh, but yes, we're having challenges in terms of our manufacturing plant and our retail end in terms of, of, um, of supplying, of getting the adequate amount of, 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 of labor. You also see that in some of the um, financial services companies, um, we are seeing uh, migration, um, especially in the IT professionals and the accounting professionals, especially to Canada. Uh, so that's another area, but it's not as uh, as 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 bad uh, in terms of getting um, for the retail and our manufacturing sector. That's it. Okay, and colleagues, give me one one minute. Let me just make sure I covered everybody. This question, and of course we have our we have our we have our AGM coming up, which I'm looking forward to expand on further. Some of the breaking news that I have given you this afternoon in terms of signing with the largest financial institution for the digital platform and, and expanding our retail Western Union, Grace Canada franchise by 50 stores. Uh, hopefully that will be signed and sealed. GK1 um, doing very well. Um, I'm looking forward. Um, Keith, you had asked a question about Ghana. GK1, we're going to be looking at um, launching that in Ghana before the end of the year. And of course, you know, that is boundaryless, so we can, if we get the proper licensing, um, if we get the license that we have asked for, then we'll be good to go. So colleagues, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. I um, really appreciate it. Um, 2022 has been a challenging year. However, we have done well, given the circumstances, and 2023 has started exceptionally well for the Grace Kennedy Group. I'm very excited about the plans that we have in place that I shared with you with the business highlights um, uh, and, and some of the strategic moves that we're going to be, to be, to be making. So um, while we have headwinds, Andrew, um, we can move the sail a bit and use it to our advantage and move a little faster. So thanks a lot, everyone. And as I always say, what gets measured gets done and the best is yet to come. Thanks a lot. <laughs>